chunks of ice the size of DVDs. Enormous meteors of ice bombard a rural Texas town. Hailstones the size of grapefruits shattering in an explosion of icy shards, some even leaving craters in the ground. On May 28, 2024, the National Weather Service issued a warning unlike any other, calling for DVD-sized hail to pelt communities west of Hockley, Texas. I was inside the storm. We streamed it live to the MyRadar app. And as luck would have it, I was the one to find and report the DVD-sized hail, though my truck didn't like it that much. Here's how giant hail forms inside a severe thunderstorm. On the morning of May 28th, thunderstorms were ongoing across Oklahoma. They had formed something called an MCS, or a mesoscale convective system. Basically, a big cluster, kind of like a line with wind and some hail. That was allowing rain cool air to spill southwestwards across Oklahoma. The leading edge of that cool air exhaust marked something called an outflow boundary. And I figured storms would probably fire along it during the afternoon. Around 8 o'clock in the morning, I departed Oklahoma City en route to Lubbock. By early afternoon, a tornado watch was issued. Game on. Storms were already bubbling up. I drove to near Morton, Texas, where I encountered rotating supercell number one. Watch as the rotating storm's updraft churned directly toward me. Check out this absolute unit of a supercell near Morton, Texas. At the time, it was dropping hail the size of tennis balls, which is cool, but not quite record setting. But I knew the day was far from over. Hail in general forms in severe thunderstorms when water is carried high into the atmosphere. The tallest storms can tower 60,000 feet high. At those heights, temperatures can be ridiculously cold. We're talking minus 90, even in the dead of summer. But at those temperatures, there's hardly any water at all in the air. That's why to get hail, there's kind of a sweet spot temperature-wise. Temperatures have to be below freezing, obviously, but just warm enough to keep some water in the air. When forecasting, we call this sweet spot the hail growth region. It's the part of the cloud where temperatures are between minus 10 and minus 30 Celsius, or 14 to minus 22 Fahrenheit. If we examine weather balloon data from the afternoon of May 28th, we can see this corresponds roughly to the layer between 17,000 and 30,000 feet height. Hailstones all begin as something called cropple, or soft snow pellets, that get carried high into the clouds by these powerful thunderstorm updrafts, or columns of upward moving air. Those pellets become rhymed with supercooled water droplets, or cloud drops that remain liquid at temperatures well below freezing. They latch onto the hailstone, and then they freeze, so the hailstone gets bigger. When air bubbles are trapped in the ice, it appears white or opaque. When the water has time to release the air bubbles and freezes more gradually, it freezes clear. Most hailstones have different layers of ice, and you can actually see them. Small hail is relatively common, but to get the big hail, you need the biggest, strongest storms. Because it takes a lot to suspend hailstones aloft while they grow large and heavy. To get softball-sized hailstones to form, you need updraft speeds of 100 miles per hour. You're basically holding these stones in the air with only upward-moving air. Once the hailstone grows too heavy, it crashes to Earth at terminal velocity. Now, on this particular day, multiple storms were ongoing at once. The first hailstorm put down a lip of cold air that hugged the ground, but it didn't really cut back on how much instability or storm fuel was present in the hail growth layer higher aloft. So, I figured more storms would happen, and sure enough, a new storm was forming just to my west. According to research meteorologist Cameron Nixon, some of the worst hailstorms actually are the second storms. In other words, those that form in the cool air wake left by a previous storm. And that's exactly what was happening here. I started driving west. Once again, we had classic rotating supercell structure unfolding. I also noticed a long rope-like cloud to myself. I realized that was the outflow boundary, or the leading edge of cool air exhaust exiting the earlier storm. But there was something rather curious about it. 
You see, air was sinking on the cool side of the boundary where I was. To the south, warmer air was rising. That chafing of the air masses created an overturning circulation, like a big long roll of horizontal spin. That spin, what we call streamwise vorticity, was being ingested by the developing supercell and being tilted into the vertical, basically feeding that storm's spin. If you like this video and want to see more like it, click on the like button. It really helps us out a lot. And of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It's totally free. And click on that notification bell. That way you always know whenever we drop a new video or whenever we go live. All right, gang, science has come to life. Check this out. This is an old boundary, old turning circulation. Cold air is pushing south from an old supercell. And that streamwise vorticity, that horizontal spin, is being sucked into a new supercell, feeding its counterclockwise rotation. Literally, it's a boundary hugger. It's sucking in all this horizontal spin, tilting it vertically. That's going to help this to potentially produce a tornado, which again, is concerning. But to see that science in action, to see the streamwise vorticity is amazing. As I drew nearer, the storm was spinning faster. Air was flowing in from the southeast at the low levels, but the changing winds with height were coiling its rotating updraft into a beautiful barber pole. Watch right here too as dust just fans into the circulation, marking the inflow rushing in to fuel the storm. Ultimately, I did know the storm was elevated or rooted a little bit higher above the ground. That meant it had higher cloud bases and probably wouldn't produce a tornado. But it wasn't long before the big hail started falling. At first, it was the size of golf balls then tennis balls. I decided to park under a tree in the small town of Pettit and wait. The hail freezer in my truck was plugged in and ready to go. Because let's face it, who doesn't have a hail freezer in their truck? Now at this point, the National Weather Service in Lubbock had warned the storm would be quote, destructive with three inch hail. That's roughly the size of a baseball. But moments later, the hail grew even bigger. Some was the size of softballs, then grapefruits, and some even larger. Watch the moment this five inch stone left an impact crater in the ground. All right, gang, baseball to softball sized hail right now near Bratz, Texas. It's very loud. That was very loud. Yeah, definitely some softballs mixed in there. I actually felt kind of bad because there was a panicked rabbit frantically running around searching for shelter. I think he eventually settled underneath a trailer. The hail briefly stopped, allowing me to run outside and collect the biggest stones, with the helmet on of course. And some were actually nearly five inches across. I called the weather service in Lubbock and basically said, hey, not sure you'll believe me, but we really do have DVD sized hail falling. By now, the storm was roughly 11 miles tall and just chock full of hail. Look at this slice through the storm. You can see the column of hail in the purple falling all the way from about 35,000 feet. So again, it forms in that hail growth layer and then plummets to earth. Even the most conservative radar algorithms were estimating five inch hail, which frankly, I've never seen them do before. Moments later, weather service forecasters actually upgraded their bulletin, warning that DVD-sized hail was expected for the first time on record. We've never seen a DVD-sized hail warning before. The storm was drifting towards Leveland, a town of roughly 12,000 people and the seat of Hockley County, Texas. Guys, I'm soaked, but look what I just collected. Some of these four to five inches across. This one bigger than a softball, it's about grapefruit size, four and a half inches. After, frankly, joyfully collecting more hailstones, I drove south. That's where I found one that looked like a pineapple. It was about 4.9 inches across. But I glanced to my west and yet again, another storm was forming. It wasn't super strong, but it was rotating. Meanwhile, freshly fallen hailstones littered the ground everywhere. Millions of icy baseballs had cooled the air at ground level only, causing the moisture in that air to condense and form what we call hail fog. That new storm to my west was inhaling the hail fog, breathing in the hail cooled air as inflow. With the freezer full of hail, I decided to take a chance and text a research friend at Penn State named Ian Giamanco. He is spearheading a study run by the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety, and I knew he was doing field work in the area. I offered him the freezer full of giant hail because, you know, why not? 
Turns out he was as excited about the giant hail as I was. He wanted to 3D scan it. We set a meetup location about 40 miles away in the town of Wilson, Texas. But getting there meant driving through the hailstorm yet again. And by now, it was only producing golf ball sized hail, but lots of it. It wasn't long before my windshield was shattered. Ironically, it had survived the DVD sized hail underneath the shelter of a tree, but it couldn't survive the golf balls. Go figure. The driving was rough though. Hail fog briefly reduced visibility down to about 30 feet, meaning we were basically flying blind. Once I met the team, they collected the stones and later 3D scanned them, using them to make digital models. In addition, they sliced through the stones to reveal their inner structure. Like an onion, you can see the concentric layers surrounding the inner core. Then as the sun began to set, the sky transformed into a sublime scene. You can see those pouch-like mammatus clouds lining the underside of the thunderstorm anvil, almost reminiscent of bubble wrap. Melting hail caused even more flooding in the gullies nearby and hail fog too. In the end, one of the stones I found measured 4.63 inches in diameter, about the size of a DVD. It's a new record for Hockley County, Texas. My truck, meanwhile, sure, got some more dents. It's nothing new. And the windshield didn't really fare so great, but that's all right. As they say in the commercials, safe light repair, safe light replace. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matthew Kikuchi. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.